Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Faith. Welcome to you guys here in person. Welcome to everybody who's with us watching online too. And a special welcome to guests and visitors. We are glad and excited that you're here. Everything that you'll need for the service is printed out for you in our service folders today. You can follow along through there. In the service, there'll be a time to fill out one of the connection cards that we have. You can also find a link to do that online and, and do it there too. And maybe the most obvious thing that you see today is I am not Pastor Spouty. My name is Pastor Steve. I serve as the pastor up in Hudson at Emmanuel and Pastor Spouty did an awesome thing and we got to flip-flop and he's kind of filling in for me today. The service themes that you guys have been going through for the last little while is the Christian... Today we're going to see how the Christian finds rest, true rest in Jesus. May God bless our worship. Our opening hymn is on page two. It's hymn 336, Come Unto Me, Ye Weary. We'll sing verses one, two, and four. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. God of all power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Help us love you with all our heart. Strengthen us in true faith. Provide us with all we need and keep us safe in your care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson that we're going to look at today, connected to this service where we dig into the real, true rest that Jesus gives us, it comes from Exodus chapter 33. Moses was going to lead the Lord's people into the promised land, and he could have certainty and know for sure that because God was with them, they would have rest. Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people? from all the other people on the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, 
I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on those whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm that's connected to our service this morning is Psalm 145. We'll sing it responsively according to the directions in the service folder. The second lesson that we're going to look at comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7. In it, we hear about this struggle that we all have, our sinful nature against the new self that wants to live for God and serve God. But on our own, we would find no rest in this struggle. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory. He gives us rest in Jesus. Paul says here, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. 
Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work within me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Happy are they who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. Alleluia. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel lesson that's connected with our service comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. This will serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Praise be to you, o Christ. Let's confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed on page 9. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to sing our hymn of the day. It's hymn 419, and we'll sing verses 1 through 4 and verse 7.
Let's begin by joining together to pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. My body language made it obvious to anybody who saw me. The day before, I had worked 16 straight hours, and by the end of that day, I'd worked another 18 more. In those two days, I'd spent more than 34 hours at my job and had much, much less sleep than that. And that's why I don't remember who said it, but kind of at the end of that second day, somebody came up to me and they said, Hey, you need some rest. Okay. (laughs) When you need some rest, it's easy to see it. It's so much harder to try to hide when it's just obvious. And brothers and sisters, those of you who are here today, those of you joining us online, it's just in front of me. You need some rest. These last few months have taken a toll, haven't they? So many things that we were looking forward to canceled and finished. Big life events like weddings and graduations and confirmations and celebrations They got changed into just about nothing that we wanted them to be. Maybe for some of us, it was work that either completely changed or stopped. And school, kids, you guys know, that that was different. Maybe not that great either. Through all of it, all of these changes, all the turmoil, all these terrible things, what did you guys do? You kept going because... That was the only thing you could do. But today, it's okay for us to admit it. I know I need some. I know you do too. You need some rest. I think just about everybody understands that you need rest, right? Even here in America, where our days off are few and far between, people still get it. We love vacations. We look forward to the weekend to recharge for the weeks that are coming up. Even the workaholic who loves to work all the time, every day, I think deep down they even understand it. God did not create us to work constantly without a break. You need some rest. So the question for you is, where do you find it? How do you fill in this blank? If I just, then I'll be good to go after this. Is it the weekend up at the lake riding on jet skis? That's pretty good. How about maybe is it that video game that you love that you're just diving into and you can lose hours playing it? Maybe not all of you. Or maybe for you, it's going and traveling and getting to that different place where you've never been before, maybe a different culture that you get to experience. There are so many different ways that you and I, we try to find rest. There are so many places that we try to go to. But you need rest, real rest. How about this for rest? How's your daily devotional life in God's Word going? How about those family devotions? How often do they happen where you gather together around Jesus? Are the fears and worries filling up your mind and your thoughts so that Jesus promises and God's guarantees they're not even there at all anymore? The lake, video games, whatever ways that you guys try to find rest, they're good and they can help you find physical rest but you need some rest, real rest. The only way I was going to find rest in this situation was is if I finally looked it up online and found out how to do it. You guys remember Rubik's Cubes? 
Yeah, some of you definitely do. Kids, if you don't, ask your parents. They'll explain. You can still find them at the stores. Not long ago, my father-in-law brought us a Rubik's Cube, that shape where it's got nine, nine uh, colors, and you try to get colors on each side. It's a big puzzle. He brought it to our house, and for about two weeks, I struggled, and I worked, and I worked, and I tried to find the solution. I'd flip it around, and I'd change it, and okay, that strategy wouldn't work. So I'd think things through, and I'd think, okay, a different strategy. Maybe that'll work. And my plan in the end was, if I tried enough strategies, if I thought things through enough, no matter what, I was going to find one, and it would happen, and I would get it done. Now you know. It did not happen. I didn't finish it. Thanks, Google. What I ended up doing was finding it online. But this is the genius of that puzzle, right? It tries to make you overthink everything that's happening. The reality is, if you look it up, there are just a few simple steps. And if you follow those simple steps, you can finish it. The solution is much easier than you think it is. Brothers and sisters, it's the same with this real rest that Jesus gives. You need some rest. And God gives real rest to infants. This is what Jesus said. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. The way to true, meaningful rest is something that the smartest, most intelligent people will never come up with on their own. Instead, Jesus says, I give it to kids. And the word here, it's awesome. It's not like kids. The word here is infants. God, this is how you're going to do it? You're going to give rest to babies? Well, if you want to know how God works, you need some rest. Jesus said, No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You see, there's this awesome Trinity relationship thing going on here, right? God the Father knows the Son. God the Son knows the Father. But that's not all that's included in this circle here. Who else is in it? It's us. Us who need real rest. Us, the ones that Jesus reveals God the Father to. And when Jesus reveals God's plan, he gives us rest. This is God the Father's plan for all people, for all time. Summed up in one short little sentence, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. There's no ceremony you have to perform. There's nowhere you have to travel to. There's no amount of work that you have to do. Jesus simply and sweetly just says, Come to me, You'll have rest. This is real rest. This is the rest that Jesus gives you when you feel loaded down and burdened. You need Jesus' rest. And this is the rest that he gives. Rest knowing that all of your sins have been forgiven. This real rest that Jesus gives us, it changes your life, right? A friend of mine struggles with sleep apnea. You guys, maybe some of you know sleep apnea, what it is. Mo most of you might know this. If you have it, you snore awfully. It's terrible. So he has sleep apnea and he was really struggling with it. But it's a strange disease. I thought it was just more struggling with snoring. But the reality is, you can't get the oxygen into your head that you need to get. And sometimes when you're sleeping at night, you actually stop breathing altogether. Ugh. Intense. So he went in and he had this sleep study done where they put a mask on you and they pump oxygen in so that you get oxygen that you need. And he really couldn't sleep. It was just uncomfortable. Things weren't good. And he slept for maybe about two or three hours. 
But when he woke up from the sleep where he had oxygen coming in, do you know what he thought? He thought he'd been asleep for seven or eight hours. He woke up and the person that was watching over him, he said, is this how everybody feels after a night of sleep? This is awesome! You see, once he was connected to the thing that he really needed the most, he could find real rest. That's what being connected to Jesus and his rest does for us. It changes our lives. It helps you in the day-to-day life right now when things change again and again and you don't know what's coming up. It helps you through all the other changes and the uncertainty of the big picture that we're trying to look forward and we just can't see what's coming. This real rest that Jesus gives, it gives you solid and certain ground through changes and challenges, through everything else that's coming up in life. Because this real rest means you don't have to live in fear anymore. This real rest means you can have certainty knowing that you're good with God. You need some rest, this rest that Jesus gives. But our text didn't end there. Jesus kept going. And the question then is, where does this yoke thing fit into all of this? How is that rest? Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Maybe you know a yoke is something that the farm animals, they have to have on their backs so that they get linked together with equipment and so that things go well. How in the world is a yoke rest? Well, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke and the burden that Jesus is talking about here is this life that you and I get to live right now in this real rest that Jesus gives. It's living in love for God and for other people, knowing that we don't have to do it to try to earn anything from God. It comes from that free and full forgiveness that he gives us so that it is no more a burden. Instead, we get to live a life free and full of joy for God and for other people. This is part of the real rest that Jesus gives. Now after this, after the service today, I finally get some rest. For about the next two weeks after this, I get to take a break and you guys know as a pastor, it's good to take a rest. And I'm going to have physical rest. I'm not going to be doing work like that. But the real rest that I want to try to dive into for these two weeks is the same rest that you guys need to. It's this real rest in Jesus. It's taking more time a day and being connected to him and what he's done for you. And in our world right now, you need some rest. And this real rest, Jesus will always give it. Amen. Please stand. We'll respond to God's word by singing the Create in Me, found on page 11. and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children on earth. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. You 
use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your role. We bring you our requests for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Help us find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Give us teachers and students who pursue excellence. Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Dear Lord, dear Lord, as you led Moses to elect leaders for Israel, lead us to elect capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain in our upcoming elections here at Faith. We trust you will work through them. O oh Lord, you sustain the sick and restore the ill. You can do so through medical means. We pray that you would bless the efforts to put forth to find a treatment for COVID-19. And ultimately, we find rest in Christ, who bore our griefs and sorrows. Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give to us the forgiveness of sins. We appreciate the times we have enjoyed this sacrament, and we look forward to celebrating this meal next weekend for our in-person worship. Bless us through this meal. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught, with confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we'll sing the next hymn, hymn 338.
Please stand. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll continue with our closing hymn. You may be seated. Again, thanks for joining today for worship. Those of you here in person, those of you joining us online, we're glad that you could be here to gather around the rest that Jesus gives. You can see all the announcements there listed on page 17. Uh, I do want to thank Pastor Spouty especially today. He's filling in for me. We kind of did a flip-flop. He's serving up at Camp Croy this week, and I got to be here with you guys. The other thing that we're going to be looking at is our Wells Connection today. And I think we'll watch that now. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. We've all heard about college students who are increasingly saddled with mountains of debt. Paying off that debt might be manageable for a doctor or an engineer, but it's a much bigger challenge for a new Wells pastor, teacher, or staff minister. Thankfully, there's something we can do to help our new ministerial education graduates start off on the right foot. The chapel at Martin Luther College is filled as students begin Evangelism Day on campus. The annual event starts with an inspiring worship service, which is followed by a series of practical workshops. Because we love them. If we love them, what better thing could we do for them than to give them eternal life? This special evangelism training is just one more step in a first-rate education that develops quality pastors, teachers, and staff ministers for congregations like yours. Young people who are prepared and eager to reach out with the gospel. 
It's all about focusing on the message and getting that message to as many people as possible. When they are driving the conversation, they don't want to stop. It's harder to focus on the work when a new graduate has burdensome loan payments. And that's why the Wells Endowment for Student Financial Assistance was created. It's people like you, helping young people like these get a clean start in their lives of ministry. So it's really, really encouraging to know that people that do not even know us um, are supporting our cause here at MLC, and that's to be training in the Word. It'd be awesome to meet everybody that has supported me along the way, even though I don't know who they are, to thank them, to reach out to them. One benefit of the Wells Endowment for Student Financial Assistance is that it provides a regular, consistent source of funds, so our schools can weather the booms and busts of the economy and the ups and downs of enrollment. We have a shortage of called workers in a lot of different areas, and being able to get these students through and be able to afford college and, and give them an offering to help them um, give back to the Wells by being a called worker is, is it's a big deal. I could be called to a congregation that um, is giving of their gifts to this endowment fund, and those are people that I want to give back to and serve their families, serve that congregation and the schools in any way that I can with my God-given abilities. Graduation day is a key step in a lifetime of service. The endowment fund is a way that we can all help these future leaders as they begin the journey. So the more that we can address that early on, uh, the more we can free them up, they can just give themselves to ministry and not have to worry about this, this stuff in the background. And I know I've, I've received um, just generous, generous blessings. And it, it just means the world, the world to me that God is working through people in these amazing ways and ways I couldn't dream of. Not everyone is called to be a pastor or teacher, but we all do have a role to play in service to the kingdom. The Wells Endowment for Student Financial Assistance is a great opportunity to support future called workers at our four ministerial education schools. Another way to support our students is through the Martin Luther College Capital Campaign entitled Equipping Christian Witnesses. It's a campaign to address the shortage of called workers and to help with student financial assistance.